it's Alicia and happy Tuesday to you. Welcome back to the Hoplop and welcome to to our new subscribers. We hope you feel super comfortable here. Well y'all, I'm on late because I spent the afternoon just crafting, crafting, crafting. I took my own advice. I took a self-care afternoon and evening. I said no laundry, no tidying up. Instead, I stayed up late last night doing a lot of tidying up so that I could just enjoy this afternoon. And I decided to invest in embossing. As I told you all, my embossing skills could have been better. And I'm one of those people that the more I do it, the better I get at it. And I also wanted to do a bunch of mixed media today. And I accomplished both goals. So let me share with you first some of the successes and some things I learned about embossing and some of the different embossing techniques and also the different types and name brands. So this is this was done with a very simple wood mounted red rubber stamp from Hobby Lobby. So not the best quality. Bought it, you know, using a 40% off coupon. But and this is the Recollections Confetti uh, embossing powder, which is ranked kind of as so-so. Actually, I found it worked very well in both the pink and the mint green. And in person, y'all, it is stunning. It makes these beautiful pastel trees, really beautiful, beautiful clean lines. I was actually thrilled with it. Okay, but when using that particular one, let's say to create tickets, and I did this just to show you because I actually made over 30 mixed media tickets today. That was my goal today. And I succeeded in doing it, including with a holographic embossing glaze which I won't show you because I'm saving it for a swap reveal, but I will tell you that a ticket like this done in the embossing glaze, which is a different process of embossing than this, is heavenly. Um, but I'll show you how it looks on the flowers. How about that so you can see. But here's what I will share with you. Recently in a video, Dina suggested that when she goes to the DT, she always buys like an angled makeup brush because it's good for cleaning up stickles, it's good for cleaning up embossing, and she's right. Uh, I just use an inexpensive paintbrush, but that makeup brush that she hauled would be perfect too. Why do you need this? Well, what happens is when you stamp out your, you do your stamping, and this is the Tim Holtz ticket stamps, what you stamp and then you cover it in embossing powder and you shake it all off and you funnel it back into your jar so you don't waste any, you need to then sometimes clean up the edges. And I left a couple to show you like here, for instance, where is it? When I went to clean up this edge using my brush, I cleaned up a little too much, you see? And I could have fixed it, but I left it so I could show you to be super careful. Whereas here, I have a nice clean line. So you can see you have to be super careful. Same thing here, I cleaned up too much. Sorry, my hands are just full of ink, y'all. And I have washed them and alcoholed them. So like, yeah, serious inking. I told y'all I'm a messy maker. Um, but I, I do love the tickets in the pink, even though I just did them as an example. Uh, most of the tickets I made today were either on mixed media backgrounds or colorful backgrounds. I did these ones on white just so you could see the quality of the print. And you can see, you really see the Admit One, even using the Recollections Confetti. The green, although you can see it, is not as clear. The blue confetti turned out great, but the green is wonderful for doing things like the trees. Really terrific. Now, what I did find is that, you know, you're supposed to use, I think, fine, fine, fine embossing powders for words and the chunkier for other things. But I actually struggled a bit with the fine for words. I found the chunkier actually yielded better. Like, and I'll show you what I mean by that. Like, you can clearly see the admit one on these. And there's a lot of small words on these Tim Holtz tickets. And I found that this actually turned out great considering it's not really what people use it for. And not only could you read it, but I love the little extra sparkle. So I was pleasantly surprised with the Recollections brand. Now, I will uh, share with you that on the flowers I made, so I did a bunch of mixed media ones and I did them in both watercolor paper and in paper I wanted to just get rid of. Like I had some leftover cards last year from my, a box of Recollection cards and I didn't like some of the patterns, but I didn't want to waste them. So today I mixed media, I created pages on top of them so I could basically hide what I didn't like and then use them to create flowers. But 
Uh, if you ever notice Orm Crafty Designs or Liv, she always uses watercolor paper. And I want to show you why, y'all. So this is watercolor paper. Look how beautiful the color saturation is. Like the tone is gorgeous. There's a lovely evenness, you know, and it's thicker. I don't need to thick this up with 110 afterwards. This was using the Recollections paper that I wanted to use up. So you can see that the color saturation is not quite as perfect. It's not quite as deep. Um, and on top of that, it's twice as much work because after I'm done, I have to then do an outline of it and cut it out in 110 to thick it up. So there's real advantages to using the watercolor. I mean, th this turned out fine, but there are advantages. One is you don't have to do the thickening up, so that saves you half the work. The other is the color tonality. That said, this is expensive, and we don't all wanna put that money into the watercolor paper. So I wanted to show you that you could do it with any paper. I made some on 110. I made some using just a whole bunch of recycled paper I had, and they still turned out great, y'all. They truly did. Um, and I made over 30 of them in all different tonalities and all different color combinations, depending upon who I was making them for or what I was making them for. Now, I wanted to test out, I have something called a holographic embossing glaze. Now, it's not like the ones from Tim Holtz that you put down and you emboss. Those are the ones I'm dying to play with. No, this is still powder. Uh, the, the ones from Tim Holtz are a liquid glaze. But it's a little different in the sense that when you do something, let's say like the trees, you take your stamp, you ink up a pad of embossing ink, put that down, put all the powder on, shake it all back into the jar, and then heat this up. And that's how you get this. Well, when you're using the holographic embossing glaze, it's different. You first do all of this, like you stamp, let's say, with black, and you either use a heat tool like this, or you let it dry naturally. And then you re-stamp uh, or re-wet it into the embossing uh, ink and then cover it in the holographic glaze. Oh my goodness, y'all, that holographic glaze I am in love with, especially for the tickets. But because there is a prize for someone for a swap, um, I don't wanna show them to you, but I will show you how it looks on the flowers. So do you see how in normal, like if I just hold it to you like this, it's like, oh, that's a pretty flower, Alicia. Yeah, well now look at it in a different light. Do you see the holographic purple? Look, there it is, do you see it? That's that holographic. So in the in certain light, that holographic bright, look how that black transforms to holographic purple. It's remarkable, y'all. And that's made by WOW, and it's called Holographic Embossing Glaze Powder. It is, look at that, whoa, it's amazing. Uh, let's see if I can find you one in a different color so you can see it. It also changes the texture of the flower and makes the flower stronger and I appreciated that too. Let me find you another one in a different color. This one's very purple because it was designed, for, see? It was designed for a friend of mine that really likes purple. Look at that, whoa, whoa. It's, it's intense, it's really intense. But I think it's so pretty. I'll look at this one with the green and then in the light, in the right light, then you see the purple. It's amazing. Look. So this was really fun to play with. I got much better at it. Now, I don't have the embossing pens and I will be investing in them. Why? Because when I wanted to do fine detail, notice how much better I did this time. And this is a very fine embossing powder that's much tougher to use, y'all. Um, but when I wanted to go in and do his nosy nose and all of the little details, because I didn't have the pen, it was really hard to like just dip in certain parts of him into the ink pad and then put down the powder and then clean him up with the paintbrush. It would have been a lot better if I'd had the pen doing this kind of fine detail work. I know a lot of people use the pen to do words, but I actually would want it for fine details on things like this. So I did a ton of embossing and prep about six hours y'all my husband was like wow it's really a lot of work but you have to think about it by the time you make the mixed media paper itself and then you stamp everything and then you back it up again on 110 and then you ink all the edges and then you use the holographic glaze it's a whole production y'all it's a whole day's production so it really was like six hours of just creating 
basically 30 flowers and 30 tickets and um, Miss Deb Hendrick asked for some of these so I made some extra so I could share some with her and I have some I need for swaps and so I, yeah it's been a very busy but fun afternoon and I can actually emboss much better now. Now I understand you know how to get this kind of result nice and clean but you see look see here that just came off just now which concerns me because that shouldn't look at that y'all look look at that look how that rubbed off so I'm gonna need to seal that somehow that's never happened before now do any of you have an idea of how you seal that like any idea after you set it like why that would brush off because that's concerning uh, any advice y'all <laughs> I'm open to it please let me know but this was a super fun endeavor and I really enjoyed doing all of it. Maybe I need to spray that with a sealant, y'all. Uh, please leave me a comment down below if you know how to avoid it brushing off after. But super fun, really enjoyed it. The holographic glaze does not come off at all, y'all. I've tried taking, look at it, it doesn't. So it could be that this is just that chunky recollections and it doesn't hold as well, or I need to spray it with a finishing spray. But I'm sure you'll let me know I did want to share with you that I know a lot of people bought a mixed media station. I have to tell y'all, I use like a cutting board from the dollar store. I, if y'all remember, or you've been with me a long time, I got this cutting board in the Holy Land and I figured if it lasted me a year, it owed me nothing. And I've had it more than a year. And that, look, I did a whole day's work today and look how clean it is. And I am a messy maker, y'all. So this was like covered in ink. Um, it cleans up really well with baby wipes, although I will tell you, there's a quality difference in baby wipes, y'all. These Save and Smiles, you get $120 for $1.99 at Walgreens. And these Huggies, I usually just get for a dollar at the dollar store or the pharmacy, but the Huggies clean up much better than these. I will not be buying these again, um, but these work great. So in between stamping, in between uh, embossing in between glazing I just clean this up with a baby wipe and then at the end of it I just do a, a one clean now today I did use some glossy accents on some stuff so I did get a little bit on here that I have to clean up separately but you see y'all look at that a year later so I never invested in a media station because I am a messy maker and I figured I would just make an unholy mess of it and this was a more economical way to go and I'm really happy with it y'all so just a little tip for those of you that might not want to invest $40 in a mixed media station, a decent sized cutting board should do it y'all. Well, I don't know what you're up to. Uh, you know, I hope you've managed to take some time for yourself and some self care. I know many in our community are living with fire and smoke uh, from everywhere from Oregon, right across. We have people that had to evacuate in our community because of the hurricane. Please keep everyone in your well wishes y'all as if COVID isn't stressful enough, a hurricane and a raging fire, oh my goodness, y'all. It's concerning, it's definitely concerning. So prayers and well wishes for everybody. And that is what I was came on here to share with you today. I am looking forward to after cooking some supper, y'all know we eat late, so I'm gonna go prepare a supper and then I'm gonna watch your videos while I tidy because I didn't do any cleaning today, y'all. I did hit all my cleaning and reorg goals for yesterday but I didn't do any today. So I gotta do a little catching up after supper, but I'll watch your videos while I'm doing it. Wishing you a happy and a healthy day, and I'll see y'all tomorrow. Bye for now.